Hey guys, uh, Brian with SunflowerHammer.com here. And in this video we're going to look at a second variant of the Springfield Armory M1A, uh, the Scout Squad Rifle. Um, it kind of falls in the middle of their product lineup. Um, Springfield ba basically has three models and they're grouped by barrel length. Uh, they have the standard M1A rifle and its accurized variants. Um, it has a 22 inch barrel and weighs in at about 9.3 pounds. Then they have the Scout Squad Rifle, which is um, equipped with an 18 inch barrel and weighs in at 9 pounds. And then you get to the SOCOM series with the SOCOM 16, which has a 16 inch barrel and weighs in at 9.3 pounds, also the same as the standard rifle. And then you have the SOCOM 2, which has a 16.25 inch barrel and weighs in at 10 and a half pounds. So um, if you look at the standard rifle, um, it was originally you know a battle rifle and it excels at long distance shooting although it can be used at closer distances but um, it wasn't was, was ideal for say patrol use by um, law enforcement or CQB um, by say a SWAT team or um, our, our military fight in the Middle East or home defense so first they came out with the um, scout squad rifle and I think it was pretty successful. So then they um, came out with the SOCOM series, which is really spe specialized and, and, and really excels in the CQB um, and home defense arena. So with that, uh, we'll get into this rifle. I'm gonna do a brief overview, ju just explain how the Scout Squad is different th than the other two variants, and mainly concentrate on some of the accessories that you can use um, with your M1A or any other rifle for that matter, but um, not 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 going to go into real detail on the M1A because Blake already did that with the SOCOM too. So hopefully you'll learn a little something, and if you're shopping for a rifle, hopefully this gives you some good. This is the M1A Scout Squad rifle. As I said before, it has an 18-inch barrel, and it weighs in at nine pounds. Um, besides the barrel length. The really only big difference between this and the standard Springfield Armory M1A um, is the forward mounted optics rail. Uh, this forward mounted optics rail is, some kind, is sometimes called a scout configuration um, because with a forward mounted optics with long eye relief, i.e. your eye doesn't have to be right up to the scope, um, it makes this rifle um, fairly, fairly um, quick pointing and fast shooting. So. You, you can get on target a lot quicker than you can with a standard M1A that has a traditional um, op optics package on it. So um, from, from the fact that this rifle comes with a sling mount in the rear and the front, on this rifle uh, the front sling mount's been replaced with a quick detached stud which will mount a Harris bipod. Um, when I purchased this rifle, um, I sent it off to a gunsmith, a uh, tanks rifle shop in Fremont, Nebraska. They did, they did a basic tune on the gun, um, went, went, went through it, checked the tolerances and tightened things up. And while it was there, I had him swap out uh, the front sling mount for this quick release stud for the mounting of a Harris bipod. And the bipod basically has two little nubs that slip into that quick, quick attached post and you screw it up and you have your bipod mounted. Um, this bipod is a two, two position adjustable so in the low position it's great for shooting off a bench and then you can extend the legs down if you're going to be shooting prone. Um, you, you can flip the legs back up in either position so that say if you're shooting prone and you want to change positions um, you don't have to retract the legs before you flip up your bipod uh, but I said that comes on and off easily and quickly um, I'd say the only drawback to this configuration um, is that if this had a rail mount attachment I would be able to swap it say between a SOCOM 2 and an AR that has uh, um, a forward mounted 
hand guard rail. Um, in, in this configuration, it's dedicated to a rifle that has that quick detach stud. And I don't know if you can get the quick detach stud with a Picatinny rail attachment or not. I'll have to look into that. But like I said, that's something that isn't quite as versatile on the Scout Squad rifle as, say, the SOCOM 2. Um, you have to more your options for the SOCOM 2 um, can be swapped between rifles that have a same or a similar rail system whereas with, with the standard M1A or the Scout Squad you basically have to um, dedicate an accessory to that rifle. Uh, the one exception is optics and with this standard optics rail here you can mount a wide variety of optics um, with the long eye relief um, you need to either use a red dot scope, um, a holographic scope, or a traditional lens and prism scope, but it needs to have long eye relief, as I said earlier. Um, in this case, I use a Aimpoint ML2 red dot scope. Um, it has a 4 MOA dot, which means the dot is representing uh, 4 inches at 100 yards. Ideally, um, the M1A with the 7.62 round, I should probably go to a 2 MOA dot, which lets you get a little more accuracy at distance. And I should move this side over to my AR or my Mini 14, which I plan to do at some point, but, but I just haven't decided what optics package I want to put on, on this M1A uh, for the long term. There are some excellent scopes out there. Um, I'm happy with the aim point. But I'm also looking at something that has some magnification. Uh, Aimpoint does have a magnifier that you can put behind their scope or behind their optics so that you can um, have the advantage of the red dot with magnification. Uh, Trivagicon, they have their ACOG series, which is an excellent scope, but it's fairly expensive. Oh, and then there's some traditional um, lensed optics that that have long long on relief and are for tactical uses so i'm looking at a couple of those too so but i haven't decided yet and if i do get a second um optics i will do a video on it and and, and share it with you guys uh one one note on the aim point scopes um or the aim point op optics packages uh, there's only one of them that comes with a mount the majority of the aim points um, do not come with a mount. So if you're looking to buy a new one or a used one, um, take that into consideration um, in your pricing comparisons. Because um, a good billet aluminum uh, quick detach mount for the Aimpoint will cost between $70 and $100. Um, I think the new model that Aimpoint has, um, it takes AA batteries and comes with a mount. And I think it's the ML4, but don't quote me on that. Um, and I haven't used that optic and it looks interesting, but... Um, it's, I think, about $300 more than the ML2. So I don't know if it's worth it because it's $700 bucks you are get, get, getting up into ACOG territory or close to ACOG territory. So uh, the optics discussion, there's tons of optics out there. But like I said, I've been happy with the aim point. And with the quick detach mount here, you just uh, line it on the rail, tighten it down. Um, the knob here has a breakaway to where you can only tighten it so tight and you're good to go. Um, basically you zero this once and you can take it on and off the rail and it stays zeroed because um, when I transport my rifle I take the optics off I don't transport it with the optics um, but one option on the aim points too are the flip up caps which I highly recommend um, it comes with oh, the two little caps that have a, um, a bungee in between them and tension themselves on but I'm always losing those so I upgraded to the snap-on caps um, if you look at the rest of the rifle it's pretty much the same so um, with that I'll get into uh, the mags <laughs> 